The top stories tonight in Y News. The Department of Justice leaves to the Bureau of Corrections the investigation over the issue of unfinished Bucor Regional Facilities. The Department of National Defense orders the armed forces of the Philippines to boot his presence in the West Philippine Sea following reports of new Chinese activities close to Pagasa Island. The Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange expects passenger volume to reach 175,000 from last-minute travelers this holiday rush. And NASA's groundbreaking mission to study the red planet Mars officially comes to an end after four years. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, the 22nd of December, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am William Theo. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. encouraged local government units to set up common area for fireworks display. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. In order to reduce firecracker injuries, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. urged local government units to set up a common area for fireworks display to welcome the new year. Ang gawin na lang natin ay I will enjoy the LGUs uh, in, uh, uh, instead of uh, allowing our people to, to uh, uh, have their own firecrackers, gumawa na lang tayo ng magandang fireworks display para sa inyo mga constituent. President Marcos Jr. also warned Filipinos about the dangers and health effects of firecracker use. The Department of Health earlier noted the downward trend in firecracker-related injuries in the country, citing figures in recent years. In 2017, former President Rodrigo Duterte has signed an executive order regulating the use of firecrackers and other pyrotechnic devices in the country. Executive Order No. 28 confines the use of pyrotechnics to community fireworks displays to lessen the risk of injuries. Community fireworks display should be conducted on the occasion or as part of a celebration, competition or similar event held in a venue outside residential areas. Community fireworks display can only be done under the supervision of a trained person licensed by the Philippine National Police. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DENR, has called on the private sector to work closely for climate action. DENR Secretary Antonia Loizaga said the private sector and the national government should work together for the shift to renewable energy in order to address the threat of climate change. The official said this would also aid in the possible effects of natural disasters. She also said that companies should set up a goal for zero emissions as well as find ways to preserve and protect the ecosystem and communities. <music> Meanwhile, the Department of Justice or DOJ has left to the Bureau of Corrections the investigation over the issue of unfinished Bucor regional facilities. Dante Amento tells us why. Justice Secretary Crispin Rimulia believes that Bureau of Corrections or Bucor officer in charge Gregorio Katapang Jr. knows better over the issue of unfinished Bucor regional facilities. Hence, Rimulia has allowed Katapang to investigate the matter. The construction of these facilities started in 2020 and 2021 during the tenure of suspended Bucor Chief Gerald Bantag. It's not, it's not my call anymore. But of course, if he says that there's really something wrong, he's the one who knows. He's in the best position to judge, not me. He mentioned that to me. And uh, he knows the process. To, he has the process to, to investigate it properly and to document it. 
In a document shared by Katapang to UNTV News, the three building facilities are constructed in Davao, Palawan and Leyte for 300 million pesos and over 85 million pesos for rehabilitation of admin building, dorm and correctional institution for women in Mandaluyong and dorm building in Zamboanga City. Katapang also disclosed that Bucor personnel assigned to assess the project were mandated to manipulate the status of the construction. It cannot happen that wala yung, uh, it's just a simple employee that ordered that they be uh, doctored, you know, galing sa taas yung order. And they mentioned the name of uh, Bantag as the one who ordered them. The facilities were allegedly almost finished, where in fact, based on the actual inspection, these were only 60% done. And all of these facilities were not finished in time. And yet, we already paid 95% of the cost of building up the facilities. Pero we, we came to realize that it's only 60% uh, finished. So uh, we would like to look into this in as much as these are public funds. Katapang added those involved are now under investigation for the case build-up before filing a plunder complaint against Bantag. The people responsible to assess the, the permits or the, the uh, extent of uh, accomplishment uh, accepted that indeed they were told to doctor the documents uh, saying that this is already 95% finished but uh, truthfully it's not yet. Bantag's camp meanwhile said they will answer in the proper forum upon receipt a copy of the complaint. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Bureau of Customs, or BOC, has started shipping the remaining abandoned balikbayan boxes to the consignees or recipients in different parts of the country. Ten containers with balikbayan packages were transported to BOC collection districts in Visayas and Mindanao regions. And for those destined in Luzon except Metro Manila, will also be distributed by the BOC collection districts which have jurisdiction over the municipalities or cities where the boxes are bound. The recipients will receive the Balikbayan boxes for free. In other news, the implementation for the SIM Registration Act will be on December 27. Days before the implementation, telecommunication companies have begun their information dissemination for the SIM Registration Act. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. Telecommunication companies are one of sharing tech scams. Telcos already released guidelines and frequently ask questions on their social media pages to shed light on the implementation of the SIM Registration Act on December 27. For Globe TM or Globe and Home prepaid Wi-Fi users, they can register through new.glow.com slash simreg. Postpaid users are considered pre-registered. Globe will only need to send a verification message to confirm their details and other information. Postpaid users can also transfer the ownership of their SIM cards, while Globe has yet to confirm if prepaid SIM users can also transfer ownership. According to Globe Telecom, they will open a Globe One app in January next year for the registration of their users. Smart Communication will also open a registration website for their users. Smart and TNT SIM users can go to smart.com.ph slash simreg. Postpaid and enterprise customers, meanwhile, will have their information and documents confirmed for their SIM cards to be registered. Existing subscribers of Vito Telecommunity would need to register through its Vito app, while new users will receive an SMS link for their registration process. All registration website and applications will be open on December 27. Users can register multiple SIM cards. According to the law, there is no limit in registering under the same name. In support of the SIM Registration Act, Globe Telecom will devote a special funding to establish secure systems and facilities 
first-safe rollout. Existing team users will have 180 days or until April 2023 to register their SIM card. According to the implementing rules and regulations of the cell law, there will be an extension of up to 120 days. Telcos warn that their SIM cards will be deactivated if they fail to meet their registration deadline. Eileen Cerudo, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Bureau of Customs confiscated on Wednesday, December 21, two containers of smuggled onions with estimated value of 20 million pesos at the Mindanao Container Terminal or MCT port in Misamis Oriental. The agency said in a statement on Thursday, December 22nd, that the shipments were intercepted in joint operations of the BOC Northern Mindanao, Customs Intelligence and Investigation Service, Chamber of Customs Brokers Incorporated, Department of Agriculture, Enforcement Security Services, and the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. Customs Commissioner Yogi Filimon Ruiz said they cannot let the smugglers to be more empowered on their activities because the people will be the most affected if onions will be sold at higher prices in local markets. The intercepted shipment arrived in Cagayan de Oro City on December 6, 2022 and contained 50,000 kilograms of onions that were declared as bread and pastries from China. Customs Intelligence and Investigation Service explained that they were able to intercept the shipment after they received information about the containers that will pass through the MCT port while carrying smuggled onions. On the same day, Port of Cagayan de Oro District Collector Alexandra Lumontad has immediately released a pre-lodgement control order against the shipment. And for our news abroad, Ukraine is still alive and kicking, the nation's president said as he gave his address at the U.S. Congress, vowing that Ukraine will not surrender, saying no compromises to end the war. Paul Gachelian details why, live. Good evening, Paul. Giona expressing shared values of security and democracy with the United States. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky thanked the U.S. for their support, stating that their help was an investment. In his first known international trip outside Ukraine since the war started, President Zelensky arrived at the U.S. on Wednesday, December 21, and met with U.S. President Joe Biden at the White House after 2 p.m. local time. As he was given a standing ovation during his speech at the U.S. Capitol, he declared that there are to be no compromises in ending this war, further saying that the United States' support is crucial to reach a turning point to winning the battlefield. President Zelensky also encouraged stronger sanctions against Russia, holding them responsible for their aggression. During his joint press conference with U.S. President Joe Biden, President Zelensky announced the new package from the United States as defense support. I have good news returning home. President Biden announced a new package of defense support, uh, about two billion U.S. dollars, and the strongest element of this package is the Patriots battery systems, something that will strengthen our air defense significantly. This is a very important step uh, to create a secure airspace for Ukraine, and that's the only way we would be able to deprive the terrorist uh, country and their terror attack. In symbolizing his gratitude for President Biden and the United States support, President Zelensky gave Mr. Biden a medal from a Ukrainian soldier he encountered the day before. Meanwhile, President Biden exchanged words with President Zelensky at the press conference, conveying the determination of the Ukrainian people amidst the war. And I emphasize unbreakable determination to choose their own path. To Ukrainian people, I say to them all, you have demonstrated, you have shown your strong stand against aggression in the face of the imperial appetites of autocrats who wrongfully believe you might, you might, they, they might be able to make might right and they're not able to do it. Thus far, they've not, they've stood alone. 
you know, and you have, but you haven't stood alone. Back to you, Giona. Thank you, Paul, for that live report. Singapore's Ministry, Ministry of Health urges citizens to purchase medicine enough for their own needs. Ia Devera will tell us why. Cases of COVID-19 are surging once again, and over-the-counter medicines have seen an increase in demand at pharmacies in Singapore. Therefore, the Ministry of Health urges its citizens to limit their purchases in order to keep stocks under control. Health officials said that branded medicines have had shortages, and while others have been placed, restocking them across the country will take a while. They advise the citizens to purchase a different brand if their preferred ones are unavailable, saying that there are many brands available for each type of medicine, and generic medicines will still be as effective as the branded ones. Medicine retailer Watsons have acknowledged the spikes in demand of flu-related medicines and gave currently set a limit of six on Panadol products. Watson's also added that they are keeping in track of distribution of products locally and are working with the MOH to ensure that medicines will be available to those in need. Ia Devera, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, Chiona. The Department of Agriculture, or DA Region 2, confirmed the cases of anthrax in Cagayan on December 16. On a social media post, the agency said that based on the investigation of the DA Department of Health, or DOH, and local government unit, there are four carabao died due to the disease in Barangay Calasitan, Santo Nino, Cagayan. The owner of two of the carabao were able to slaughter and sell to consumers of Barangay Anaftan, Amunlung, Cagayan. DOH recorded 72 individuals were exposed to the disease and another 60 were exposed to the infected meat. Dr. Manuel Galang Jr., veterinarian 2 of DA Regional Office 2, said that anthrax is a dangerous disease caused by a bacteria formed from a spore called Bacillus anthracis. Included two animals that may be infected are carabao, cow, goat, sheep, horse, hog, dog, and cat. Humans can also be infected through cutaneous contact, indigestion, and inhalation. Meanwhile, the management of the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange expects passenger volume in the terminal may reach 175,000 from last-minute travelers. J.P. Nunez will tell us why. As of 6 p.m. today, the passenger volume from Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange or PITX reached more than 114,000. It is already more than the 98,000 recorded last year of the same period. According to Jason Salvador, the head of corporate affairs of the terminal, the number may still go up to 175,000 tomorrow, December 23, as last-minute travelers may still rush to the terminal. Tomorrow, dahil last day of working week, eh, yan ang inaasahan natin talaga ng peak ng ating uh, passenger count tomorrow kasi yan yung mga hahabol pa papunta sa mga probinsya nila. As of now, some tickets from different provinces are fully booked. The management advises travelers that it would be better if they have secured their tickets to ensure that they will get on the bus when they arrive at the terminal. Passengers may directly inquire to bus companies on the availability of the tickets in their desired destination. Nagkakaubusan na tayo. No? Uh, Siyempre, dalawang araw bago magpasko, uh, uh, understandably, medyo nagkakahirapan na siya talaga, lalong-lalo na yung mga biyaheng patungong Bicol. Pero maganda lang dito, uh, hindi naman tayo humihinto sa pagkuhan ng mga additional units at paghingi ng mga special permits. Other walk-in passengers have tried to be a chance passengers. However, with a short supply of available slots, they failed to avail bus tickets in the terminal. Wala na po. Sobrang ano na po, fully booked na po. 
Mm -mm. Tsaka yung DLTV din po, fully book na din po. Magpapabook sana po kaso ano eh. Kaso bukas daw, fully book na din. May contact pa akong van, baka, baka sakaling makatag, makatag book sa van. Special. Mga taga doon din po sa amin. Ano po, galing po na ako kasing ano eh, na yung tinabi nyo, pupunuan din. Tapos dumiretso na ako rito. Parang ipagsapala lang ako kung may biyahe pa dito. Wala na po. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of National Defense, or DND, on Thursday, December 22, directed the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, to boost its presence in the West Philippine Sea, or WPS, following reports of new Chinese activities close to Pag-asa Island. The DNDS issued the statement after Bloomberg reported about the monitored new Chinese construction and reclamation activities in Eldad Reef, Whitsun Reef, Lian Kiam K and Sandy K in the Spratly Islands. It explained that the Pag-asa Island is part of Philippine sovereign territory and intruding or reclaiming on the WPS features is a threat to the security of the country. The department added that reported Chinese activities may also threaten the marine environment and weaken the stability of the region. In a statement, the country's defense department rather has urged China to observe the existing rules-based international order and to stop aggravating tensions in the WPS and the larger South China Sea. The Chinese embassy in Manila has denied reports that their country is doing new construction and reclamations in the said unoccupied features of the Spratly Islands in the West Philippine Sea, or WPS. This came after a certain news organization reported in an article about the monitored new Chinese activities in Eldad Reef, Whitsun Reef, Lian Kiam K, and Sandy K in the Spratly Islands. Chinese embassy has retweeted a tweet of the South China Sea, or SCS, probing initiative saying that the said report is 100% fake news and that sandbars and formations of Lian Kam K, Aldad Reef and Whitsun Reef naturally change every year while Sandy K is already occupied by Vietnam. Eldad Reef and Whitsun Reef are located within the 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone or EEZ of the Philippines. Apart from COVID-19, Department of Health notices a growth in non-communicable diseases this holiday season. DOH reminds the public on how to be safe over the holidays. Gladys Tuwabi will tell us why. It's the time of the year again. Holiday season often involves gathering with friends and family. Department of Health or DOH advises the public to eat in moderation to prevent non-communicable diseases. Lahat po ay gawin natin in moderation. Kapag sobra-sobra na po, ito po ay masama na. Tandaan nyo po, during this time or this season, mas marami pong nauuspital because of the different non-communicable diseases, cardiovascular diseases, marami inaatake, marami po na sa stroke. DOH also reminds the public to always wear mask if traveling this holiday season. Lagi po nating pipiliin na magmask tayo, especially pag nakita natin na maraming tao sa ating pupuntahan, pangit po yung lugar na ating uh, nadaloy ng hangin na ating pupuntahan. Kapag hindi kayo bakunado, pag kayo nakakatanda, kapag kayo ay buntis o kaya yung mga ating mga kabataan, pagsuotin natin ng mask para walang magkakasakit. Meanwhile, the department reiterates its Iwas Paputok campaign. So let us try to find ways to have alternative means of celebrating our New Year. Pwede po tayo magpatugtog na malakas, maaari tayo magtambol, maaari din po tayo magkantahan at magsayawan instead na nagpapaputok o nagpapailaw na naandyan pa yung risk na magkaroon ng aksidente. However, DOH assures the public that hospitals in the country are prepared to respond to firecracker-related injuries. Our hospitals are well prepared for this. We have a, a robust surveillance system for our fireworks injury. Meron din po tayo mga facilities na aside from our hospitals which are ready uh, with all of the management na kailangan. 
On December 29, DOH officials are scheduled to visit hospitals to check on their readiness and capacity for the possible influx of patients. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Presidential Commission for the Urban Poor, or PCUP, on Thursday, December 22nd, revealed its plan to implement more livelihood programs that will empower the urban poor communities in the country in 2023. PCUP Chairperson Under Secretary Elpidio El Jordan Jr. shared that the agency has been urged to do more sustainable livelihood programs to support President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s efforts to alleviate the suffering of the marginalized and underprivileged sectors. He also called on concerned government agencies to collaborate in promoting the welfare and interests of every poor Filipino household. Based on PCUP data, 429 beneficiaries from 16 Sustainable Livelihood Program Associations have received a total of 6.435 million startup fund during the ceremonial payout held in Mandawe City, Cebu in November. The recipients went through a meticulous process and criteria set by the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD before the distribution of funds. The distributed livelihood assistance to beneficiaries will serve as seed capital for the recipient's chosen enterprises. The PCUP, which was created in 1986 under the Office of the President, is tasked to support urban poor organizations that includes informal settlers and respond to issues on urban poverty such as demolitions, reclamation and housing. The Commission specifically helps the Marcos administration to realize its goal of reaching a single-digit poverty rate by 2028. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. on Thursday, December 22, assured Filipinos that the Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, and other concerned agencies would provide public service 24-7 to address the needs of the poor and disadvantaged individuals during and beyond the holiday season. The chief executive has lauded the DSWD for providing assistance 24-7 to Filipinos, especially during disasters, typhoons or earthquake in his speech during a gift-giving activity at the Open Amphitheater in the Rizal Park in Manila. Marcos has emphasized that the DSWD vows to continue serving the Filipino people and to help alleviate hunger and poverty even beyond the holiday season. During the activity, the president provided gifts to at least 400 children, 574 individuals and families. It includes several members of indigenous peoples or IP groups and children in street situations. President Marcos Jr. likewise noted the importance of celebrating the holiday season despite the hardships and challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic in the country and rising inflation. NASA's groundbreaking mission to study the red planet Mars officially comes to an end after four years. Nere Sedando will tell us why live. Good evening, Narissa. Good evening, Giona. On Wednesday, December 22nd, NASA announced that the stationary lander inside has stopped responding to messages from the mission control after spending 1,500 days on Mars, officially concluding the mission. The mission inside, which is short, which is short for interior exploration using seismic investigations, geodesy, and heat transport, first landed on November 26, 2018, and has ended this month, December 2022. The Associate Administrator of NASA Science Mission Directorate, Thomas Zerboken, stated that although it was sad to say goodbye to spacecraft, it was a cause for celebration as they have discovered insights into the Red Planet and also other rocky bodies, including Earth. According to NASA, Insight has given scientists a better knowledge of Mars based on the data it has gathered. The lander was able to gather the most comprehensive weather data, airing sounds of the wind, rolled out Martian winter, and observed thousands of sunrises and sunsets from the Red Planet's surface. All that will be instrumental when humans land on the Red Planet. 
Insights mission was only designed for two years but was extended twice. However, the lander's power source has dropped due to heavy accumulation of dust that covered its solar panels. Slowly, its instruments have shut off one by one and was listening to the rumble of Markquakes to the very end. Back to you, Giona. Thank you, Nerissa, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Giona Pravado, live from London, United Kingdom. Good evening. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has officially announced that on Monday, December 26th of this year, a special non-working holiday throughout the country to give the Filipino people the full opportunity to celebrate and spend their vacation during the December 25 holiday with their families and loved ones. The chief executive has made the announcement through Proclamation No. 115 based on a news release from Malacanang. As stated on the proclamation, it said that a longer weekend will encourage families to get together and strengthen their relationship towards a more productive environment and will promote tourism. Marcos also called on the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, to issue the appropriate circular that will require companies in the private to implement the proclamation. The Malacanang Palace has earlier updated the list of regular holidays and special non-working days for 2023 that allows long weekends throughout the country. This has been announced under Proclamation 90 that was released last November 11. This amended the Proclamation 42 declaring the regular holidays and special non-working days. Under Proclamation 90, January 2, 2023, which falls on a Monday, will be an additional special non-working holiday in consideration of the Filipino tradition of visiting relatives and spending time with their families for this occasion. Our Kasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament. There is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God from the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 13. It says, Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he shall also cry himself, but shall not be heard. Those are the reasons behind the news, December 22, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.